Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in New York. I'd take my hat off, but the sun's so bright up there that I couldn't see. I can hardly see the camera, and, well, I just don't want to strain my eyes, so I'm going to wear my hat, but it's going to kind of hide my face from you a little bit, but that's all right. You really don't want to see me anyway, right? <laughs> you know, I just posted a video this morning about uh, the solar eclipse coming up on April 8th and that there's going to be a sign that comes along with it. I mean, the eclipse itself is a sign, but the Holy Spirit woke me up last night and told me I was supposed to tell you that. So I did a video about that, right? But this is the facts, friend. I'm actually doing this video and explaining to you exactly why I didn't want to tell you that. Because I'll tell you, Jesus said he came for those in need of a doctor, friend, and I was one that was in need of a doctor. I'm not this special dude, some special prophet. In fact, just like Moses told the Lord, he said, Lord, I don't want, you don't want to use me. I can't even speak right, right? But that's the way I feel. And I've said to, to my father is, I said, Lord, I'm not even worth this message. Look at the past I've got. There's no way you should use me to talk about the things Jesus talked about. And you know what he told me? He said he loves all his children. And there's a messenger for everybody. And, well, there's people that listen to me, some of y'all. But anyway, so I'm going to tell you the reasons why it is I didn't want to give you that message this morning. And, and some of the fear that goes along with it. Because, friend, here's the truth. I've told you in different videos that I was with my father in the beginning, meaning that four years ago I was here, then I was there, and then I was here again, and I can't prove that. Friend, nobody in my life believes that I talk on behalf of my father, right? You can imagine my family all thinks I'm nut jobs. So this isn't something where um, I'm saying I'm special because I'm not. But if you look at Jesus' life, his family didn't believe in him either. In fact, they came down the hill to lay hands on him to say that he was out of his mind. Now, if I was out speaking to y'all, they'd probably come lay their hands on me thinking I'm out of my mind. But since I do it on the Internet, they all know what I do. They just think I'm ridiculous and, you know, leave me be. <laughs> so, but I want you to understand the fear. One of the greatest fears I have about talking about God and, and all these things is pride. So there's two reasons why I didn't want to bring up this sign that's going to happen when the solar eclipse happens on April 8th. One is because, friend, I can't prove to you that God talks to me, right? He's given me all kinds of miracles, and he's led me places and given me things, and I personally know I talk to God. But even my thought of Satan which is my thought of selfishness and fear, would always be trying to tell me that I don't, right? That in the end, so whenever I'm weak in faith, that thought comes to me. It's like a serpent, friend. It wiggles half a tongue. It reminds me of how I'm going to look like an idiot and how it is that I'm not worth this message. And that's what it does. It, I've got that thought in my head, friend, just like all of you do. And if you don't have it, you probably have it. You just, some people appear to have a lot of confidence, but sometimes they're the most insecure and they're trying to hide it from you just like I used to be trying to hide it from the world. I just quit hiding it, friend. I've been insecure my whole life, right? <laughs> so my thought of Satan is like, well, Jason, if if you talk about this, if you give them that sign that, that you were given last night, if the sign doesn't happen, everybody's going to lose faith in you, and then you're not going to be able to believe in God anymore, and, and you're going to run in, and, and like a coward, <laughs> right? That's what this thought says to me, friend. So if you're a person like me that's got two voices in your head, one of love and one of selfishness, well, then you know what I'm talking about. A lot of you might not because you haven't fallen on the rock yet, but Jesus said you have to fall on the rock and get broken into pieces, which is two pieces, and then you choose love over selfishness, and you'll find the Holy Spirit. You get to know what Jesus said inside out, upside down, and backwards, because otherwise you'll be deceived. Because here's the thing with that deceiver. I've only got one purpose, and that's to serve God. So if I got the wrong thing, and a sign does not accompany that eclipse, 
Is it going to stop me from talking about the truth of the love of Christ? Absolutely not. <laughs> However, will anybody believe me after I have given a prophecy that didn't come true? Probably not. But it really doesn't matter to me, friend, because I'm not doing this for me. The truth is my pride is dangerous. So if it, I'm just as afraid that it, you will get a sign as if you don't. Because if you do get a sign, then my pride will be like, oh, you talk to God, you're special. I'm nothing special, friend. That's my greatest fear. Because, see, when, when I take credit for anything, then my thought of Satan, which is my thought of selfishness, will cause me to become prideful, and I'll climb the mountain of pain, and then it will knock me off. It's done it over and over in my life, friend. So, but then if I also think I'm less than another... Well, then that's the way it gets me to try to, when I feel like I'm less than other people, it tries to make me feel like I'm more by looking down at other people. So the key to having the kingdom that Christ was talking about is to accept that ye are gods, and because it was written into Scripture, it can't be undone. But understand that statement, if it's true about you and me, then it's true about everybody. So that takes all your self-righteousness and throws it out the window. It means that you have to hang all the laws and all the prophets on only two commandments, and one is like the other. So when you think that I'm saying I'm something special, I'm saying that I'm zero special because I'm a child of God, so are you, and I have to treat you that way because what I do to you, I do to my Father because Jesus literally did say, and then also it was said by one of the Pharisees, two different Gospels said two different ways. I want you to understand these Pharisees will tell you things that have nothing to do with what Jesus meant. So you need to really look at these things for yourself and trust the Holy Spirit to come to you and to give you a higher truth. Right? So that's been my dilemma is I fear pride if my prophecy comes true and I fear shame and insecurity if it doesn't. But the truth is that that's a lie because I have the Holy Spirit which tells me that I am a child of God and I'm doing the best I can with what I have and that I'm supposed to act in faith. And I have given only two other prophecies where God told me specific days about specific things and they did come true. So, you know, but he's always asking me to jump off a cliff in faith. That's what faith is. Faith isn't something that you have, it's something you build. You seek the Father through the Son. You get to know Him inside out, upside down, and backwards, and then start trying to do the things He asked. And it's not an easy task. It's not for those that want to be selfish and, and want the world. If, if you want to glorify your, yourself, then you can't have what it is that my Father's offering you because you have to accept it. if you're His child, that everybody's His child. So if you want peace, love, and joy, well, then that's the choice to make, friend, because I have peace, love, and joy. I have the kingdom. However, at moments like this, it, it, this thought of Satan will come to me, and then it will try to steal my treasure, right? It'll try to, but I've been, Jesus taught me how to store up treasure in the kingdom, right? You know, give your gifts in secret. Don't tell anybody. There's a reason for all this, friend. This thought of Satan is very slick. It's in your head, and it's your adversary. It's not my father's. The church is acting like Satan could do battle against my father. They are so ridiculous. But understand that in Scripture, and because people keep seeking men to get degrees from men to tell them about God instead of doing what Jesus said. And Jesus said, call no man teacher. I'm your teacher. Right? So he's my teacher. He's my, I'm his disciple. I'm his student. Right? Rabbi, teacher disciple student so he's my teacher i'm his student and only students are entering the kingdom so if you're not interested in becoming in the spirit of love which is the spirit of the law then you won't enter my father's kingdom because it's not even what you want yet you still think that selfishness has some value and here at the end of the age you're going to discover it doesn't and that's the reason my father's judging a christian nation is because well, Christ himself is the one who breaks the seal. You know that, right? It says right in Revelation. So my father was loving the beginning. He'll be loving the end. And the father sent the son so the son could judge you so the father didn't have to. There's a whole thing going on. I've been explaining it to you for over and over. So God is love because God chose to be love. He will always choose to be love because that's what he wants to be. But without us, there is no experience of love. Now, there's an experience of love without me. If he got rid of me, 
he would still have love, right? That's what he's doing. He's farming love here, right? So do you want to be one of the crop? If you do, then you want to choose love over selfishness. And then, you know, seek him out. And he will reveal himself to you, but only if you want him to. And I'm not talking about, you know, this arrogant stuff where people are like, oh, well, then show me God. No, my father knows your heart. He knows whether you really want to know him or not. He knows whether you, you want to love more than you want to be selfish. All this stuff. My father knew the end in the beginning. He knew what you were going to do before you ever did it. He knew the thoughts you were going to have before you were ever here to have them. I cannot explain to you my father. He is way beyond understanding. If you go look at the Bible, it's said that God knew the end in the beginning. It's the only way that, that he could tell you the end in the beginning is if he was at the end in the beginning, right? So I'm not telling you anything that Jesus didn't already tell you or the Bible itself didn't already tell you. So that means my father is not only at the beginning, but he's also at the end, even though he's here. And then this is where it gets crazy, friend. Let's take, let's look at something else. If my father's at the end, that means he's in the, he's with us in the new kingdom. How could we be there if we're still here? How could he be at the end unless we're at the end with him? Do you understand what I'm saying? My father's truth is so great that it's beyond any man's comprehension. And those that try to comprehend it and glorify themselves will have everything they wanted taken from them. They'll get knocked off the mountain of pride. So I'm not here to tell you how, that I know how great my father is because he's so great that I've seen him in the beginning. I was with him in the beginning is a better way to explain it because my father has no form. Jesus literally told you that. If you're a Christian, if you believe in Jesus, Jesus said that the father is of spirit and that he wants that he doesn't want you to worship him on in Jerusalem or on this mountain that he wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth worship is a door spirit is thought and truth is love so he wants you to adore him in thought and love right that's what he wants i mean i'm laying it out here for you real simple that's what he wants he wants you to love him i love him because i know him Right, but I got to know the son, and long even before he took me to see him and to be with him in the beginning to understand what was going on, he asked a lot of me, and and I failed him a lot, friend. I, I'm a I'm a. I heard a person trying to teach you how to seek the world about failing forward fast. So, I started trying to seek the world, and I tried to fail forward fast, just not give up. Right. But that's how you find the kingdom, too. You fail forward fast. If you make a mistake, you turn to God. You say, Father, forgive me, for I know not what I do. And then you get back on the path. And the, the, if you stay on the path, he'll bring you home. But the hour's getting late. This, this warning that's coming on April 8th is no joke. You know, this is the second solar eclipse. The first one was like, six months and six years and six months ago somebody now I, I did post that on my Facebook page he calculated it out with leap years that it was literally six months or six years six months and six days six 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 I don't know I don't know about that I'm not sitting here telling you I didn't calculate this you know that my father leads me to a lot of places to see a lot of things but I can tell you this right now friend America's made some very bad decisions, and if they don't repent, they will pay their debt. So if you're not going to turn this, and it's, and don't expect that the, the corporate elite and that the politicians are going to do this, because they're not. We're, you're going to either make a stand or you're not. And it's not about you, and it's not about me. It's about God and doing the right thing and wanting what's right for my father's children. I don't know how to make this all work out. The truth is, we've gone down a path that I don't even know how to we recover from. But God is a miracle worker, and he can do anything he wants if we become willing to do it with him, right? So, if we become willing to die in order to live, and enough of us make a stand and make the right choice, well, we have an ability of turning this. i got a spider on my uh, camera, friend, and I'm sitting here watching and thinking to myself, I ought to get it off for it gets hidden somewhere and then I end up taking it home with me. <laughs> anyway, so I get on here to talk to you about how it is that I'm afraid so that you realize that I'm not some 
self-confident prophet. I'm a man that absolutely believes he talks to God because God has given me ways to prove it. But there's no way for me to prove it to you. You will never believe what it is I say because of... So you either know my father and know in faith that what I'm saying is true or you don't, right? Jesus said that my sheep will know my voice. I know his voice. Do you know his voice? Because he is in me, and I'm in him, and I speak for him, and he speaks for me. And I can't prove that to you, friend, but I've t gone over a lot of things in that Bible that other people won't even dare to look at because it's going to wreck their faith. So if you listen to my videos, you're going to hear me talk about things that nobody else will talk about in that Bible because, well, I needed faith to believe in a God of love, and they have him as this bloodthirsty serial killer that's going to torture people for eternity and that made zero sense to me friend and it still does but I don't have to believe that because he took me to the letter to the church in Philadelphia where it said to he that overcomes I will make a pillar in the temple of my God and he will go out no more well no more means not again so that's right there in scripture it's in the words in red it's the things that Christ Jesus Yeshua said to John in Revelation. It's right in the letters of the churches. So if either the whole book's true and everything he said is true or it's not. So Christianity has twisted stuff up and make it all about the way they want to understand it because that's what's convenient for them. Once saved, always saved allows them off the hook so they can go be selfish and pretend they're going to get a kingdom in their death that they're just not going to get because they didn't do the things Christ asked. Christ told you that if you leave your house at empty that the demons were going to return and bring friends. I'm a prodigal son, friend. That happened to me. But my father still welcomed me back with open arms multiple times. He put me through the mill, friend. I'm a phoenix. I've been through the fire, and it's not... I'm not mad at him for doing it. I was at the time. This relationship with my father, I'm telling you, has been a difficult relationship. I'm just not lying to you. I used to get so mad at him because I didn't believe in God's wrath. I only believed in his love and because I, I could see that there had to be a God because, I mean, there's just no way DNA, you know, look at DNA, friend. If, if you're an atheist, go really look at DNA and tell me that accidentally happened. Go look at quantum physics and tell me that that isn't real. I mean, Einstein was given theories on it, friend. So, science and the Bible both say that this is a reality within a reality, and it's beyond our comprehension, yet the Holy Spirit will come to you and give you what you need to comprehend it. So, he's given me what I need to comprehend it, but I can't explain the next reality, nor do I need to, because that's not what I need for the kingdom. Christians have themselves terrified to death of eternal hell. They have themselves terrified that they're going to do this or that. God is about love, and the purpose of the world is to come to know love by experience. If you make that choice, and you choose love over selfishness, you're doing God's will. However, God created this world for himself, right? All of us want to blame the other one, even though we're at fault for what's going on. Everybody in America that isn't doing something to change it for the good is guilty of what's going wrong. We're all guilty of this. Not just you, me, friend. I'm not here to claim myself righteous. I was a selfish man doing a lot of selfish things. So I'm not some selfish or self-righteous dude. I'm the wilderness goat, like I told you. So this is all about love, and it's all about joy and peace. However, we're getting to that time, friend, where if you don't find and choose this kingdom, you're not going to be able to get it. And that's not to say you won't, because it's talked about... Um, saints getting it through the through the tribulation right so there's more going on than what it is that they want to talk about and my father gives me some of it but he doesn't give it all to me and I run around and I listen to everybody about everything friend but my father shows me what's real and what I need to know and the truth is it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong it the question really comes down to am I going to hang all the laws and the prophets on only two commandments that means I have to love my Father, God, with all my heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And then the other one that Jesus said was like it, and that is to love thy neighbor as thyself. So I have to love my neighbor as myself. 
Friend, I live in a world where we're all connected. I can talk to people across the world in a second on a phone and be looking at them face to face. Everybody's my neighbor here, friend. I don't know what to tell you. So if you want to be justified and self-righteous and choose selfishness over love, you're not ready for my Father's kingdom. I'm not saying hell is for eternity, but I'm telling you it's coming. And you're not going to it. It's coming to you if you haven't figured that out. You could look in Revelation and see that that was the truth. And in the end, there, my father's so great that he doesn't show me. He shows me one. There's two things, and both of them I find acceptable. One is if you don't want to choose love and you don't want to choose him over the world, well, then once you pay your debt, he's going to let you disappear into the abyss like he never had a thought about you, and you will be gone from the history of everything. You will be like you never existed. Or, as you've noticed, there's billions of planets, and his. if you look in Revelation, John told you at the second when, you know, there was, he talks about two kingdoms coming. The first one to the earth, which is the new Jerusalem comes to the earth, right? But then if you go look further in, there is a, there is a new heaven and a new earth, and then the new Jerusalem comes down upon the new heaven and new earth. Well, heaven is star pattern, right? So that's telling you that somewhere in creation, another kingdom is being formed in order for us to inhabit that there then, right? Now, here's the truth, friend. It doesn't matter to me whether that's accurate or not, right? You could say that I'm wrong. I really don't care what you say because I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And, and so that tells me that if there's another kingdom coming that is going to be the new heaven and new earth with a new Jerusalem, well, that means my father could create another planet that would be an awful lot like hell. And if you want to choose that, that's where you'll go and be until you choose again. And he'll start it all over. My father won't show me the truth. He might just end it. Because he doesn't exist in time, time has no real meaning. If he's at the end and the beginning and here all at the same time, time has no meaning to my father. He could play this all out here forever or he could play it out. But imagine that God is so great that he could be whatever he wanted. If he could just be love that extended for, for infinity, why would he stop with us? I mean, if he wanted to multiply his love here, what makes you think he wouldn't want to multiply it somewhere else? I'm not telling you. My father doesn't show me the truth on this. He shows me that the truth is so great it's beyond my comprehension. And if I stay in relationship with me, he'll keep giving me more as I go. And that's what he's done. You know, I've talked to you about Jesus and Judas creating Yom Kippur. You know, that Jesus took his bread, which was his body, and he dipped it in his blood, which was his wine, and he handed it to Judas, and it said that it entered into, that Satan entered into him because Satan wasn't there to begin with. There's so much more going on than what the church knows about in that Bible. My father told you through Christ, he said, I'm going to reveal secrets that have been hidden since the foundation of the world. My father's given me secrets that have been hidden since the foundation of the world. I don't know who else knows them. Some of them he gave me no one else knows that I'm aware of. That doesn't mean they don't, right? I don't care. I'm nothing special. <laughs> I gladly give them to you because I want you to have them just like I wanted them. And he gives me some of them through other people. So some things I get through other people. Some things he gave me that one directly because I've told you I'm the wilderness goat, which means... I needed to know this from my father directly because he's asked me to become willing to die in order to live and for me to talk this message the way I do and to talk against the church. It, I'm quite aware that, you know, that the church, someone from the church might very well want to come and do me harm. And even if the church doesn't, these corporations, the thought of Satan made flesh, the dragon's going to come straight out of hell and knock me off my horse. Now, unless, of course, my father deems that I, he, I don't have to give another death. And if that's the case, then I won't have to. But I'm up. it's up to my father, whatever he needs. Understand that once I saw him in the beginning, when I returned here, if my, if my father needs to put me on a thousand crosses from now to the end of eternity, I'll climb on every one of them every time he reveals himself to me in the beginning. 
that's what it was the most terrifying experience I ever had and the greatest gift he ever gave me for the first time I understand why God creates he needs to have a dichotomy you have to have two things to choose one if you if there was just uh, love then you're a slave to love and he has pets not children to choose him and therefore he doesn't know his love by experience when you have two choices and you make the choice to choose him over not choosing him now he knows love by experience and in that is the purpose of creation and you don't have to believe that I can't make you believe that but I'm telling you that's the reason he does it because I've seen him in the beginning before creation and I understand why and what he does even though I just told you I don't comprehend it all he's given me what I need to comprehend it what I need in order to receive the kingdom and choose to keep it because I want to keep it because I love peace love and joy but I also love my father and I want my father to have peace love and joy which he's going to have because like I said, he doesn't need any one of us, but he needs all of us because he needs one of us, right? So this experience can't be had unless someone chooses to love him. Christ chose to love him, right? So he has it through Christ, but he also has it through all the people that chose Christ because he came. The Holy Spirit came down upon him and remained. He became the Word made flesh. I'm not saying that he wasn't God's only begotten Son because I'm saying he is that too. The thing is, there's so much there that Christianity has tried to put God in a box, and you can't put my father in a box. He doesn't belong there. He won't be there. He stayed there for you so that you could choose love by experience. But it's getting to that time where those that haven't made that choice, it's time for a new choice. And if you don't make it, well, then you're going to ride through hell, and hell's coming here. So understand, I'm not telling you that you're not going to pay your debt. I'm telling you every bit of debt you've ever owed, you're going to pay it if you're not going to repent. Repent means admit you're wrong, change your mind, and make a new choice. You are my father's child. He loves you. He wants you to return home. If you will not return, then you have to pay your debt. He had to create a law. That's the way this works. There was ten commandments given. Christ came because since you're not going to live up to him perfectly, right, you need forgiveness. I'm the one that was a prodigal son. I was so filthy and disgusting that I couldn't even fathom that my father would accept me if he was love, right? <laughs> Once I realized exactly how bad I was, for the longest time I was too busy looking at y'all. I was so busy looking at the speck in your eye, I didn't look at the plank of my own, but every time I looked in the plank of my own, I knew I was unworthy. If God is love and he's perfect, then I was unworthy. He sent Christ to solve this problem. Christ died so that I might live. So all things that I've done have been forgiven, right? But that means when I have a bad thought, I put my thoughts before God, and then instead of having a bad thought and trying to hide it from him, because I know that he can see it, so the only person I'm going to delude by not by hiding my thoughts from God is me. I'm the only one that becomes deceived. My father was never deceived, not from the beginning. He gave me this adversarial thought, Satan. Other people call it ego. It, I don't care what you call it, friend. It's selfish, it's evil, and it'll kill you. It'll cause you great suffering by causing your neighbor great suffering. You know, I'm not here to tell you anything different than what the Bible said, but I'm explaining to you in a different way because my father's worth it. And he has to do this in order to create love. And so therefore, he wants you to choose love over selfishness. Choose him over the world. Choose Christ over the world. He came and as Christ to represent himself. So... Jesus said a lot of things, and so I'm not like the church trying to simplify this for you, because if you want to get to know my father, it's going to get complicated, but you're going to have to have faith in him, not in the church. I mean, it's great that you all get together and and worship together, and then you create love, and then you have you use that as a vessel to serve my father's children by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and all that, but if your church isn't doing that, and it's not about being of service to my father's other children, well then you not only are a dead seed, you're in a dead tree, and that, that church is going to get ripped down. I'm not lying to you, friend. I'm telling you here, I didn't come here to, to glorify you or the church. I came here to glorify my father and tell you the truth, that my father's worth the love that he asks for, 
And if you give it to him, he'll give it to you. But if he gives it to you, it's only so that you can give it to them. So the more you get, the more you have to give. The more you have to give, the more you have to receive. The more you receive, the more you give back to him. The more you give it to him, the more he'll give to you. The more he gives to you, the more you give to them. This is, you become a, a garden hose of like a conduit of the love of Christ. The moment you decide that you have to take credit for this, it's gone, right? Because then you've taken the credit from God, and then you'll take it from your neighbor and keep it for yourself. That If you want the kingdom, the kingdom is a flow. You receive the kingdom by grace, but the only way to keep it is to give it away. He gives it to you. You give it to them. You, they give it to you. You give it to him. You give it to him. He gives it to you. You give it to them. They give it to you. You give it to him, right? That's the way this works. It's a flow. And, and you know... What happens if you if you cut off a water supply like a fresh creek? Well, it'll all turn into stale, muddy water, all kind of mosquitoes, and become unclean, right? So don't become an unclean vial of water. Instead, get in the flow, friend. Let the Spirit flow through you. Let it flow from the Father to His children, and then through his children back to you, back to the Father. This is great, friend. I'm telling you, it's the most wonderful thing ever. And if I could just explain to you how wonderful it is, and you would go do it, I would just be blessed if just one person ended up in the, having this kingdom that I've got from the words I've spoke. Now, whether I keep it or not doesn't matter, right? Because I understand that the apostles went through great challenges. And because I'm speaking the truth and saying the things I'm saying, and this message is much easier and, and joyful than some of the others. Some others, I'm outright calling people snakes, right? <laughs> you know, just like Jesus called his Pharisees snakes, I have to call my Pharisees snakes. You're, you're killing my father's children by teaching them to be selfish and saying that they're going to get a free kingdom in their death that they didn't seek in their life. And that was a lie in the beginning. It'll be a lie in the end. And every preacher or priest that tells you that is a snake. They're wiggling half a tongue. Christ never said that. Go get to know Christ. Then you can go listen to a widow Gail. She's on TikTok, and I heard her say, I was watching her one of her lives last night, and she was, and she said she has a thing on Facebook too. Miss Gail or Widow Gail. You might find her either way. But either way, she knows the Bible inside and out, and she can tell you that that faith does not come without works, that works is required. The difference is that when you have faith, you'll instead of doing it for the, the works for credit, you do it in the spirit of love. And because you do it for the love of the Father, the Son, and your neighbor, then that's a worthy gift, and therefore it's stored in the kingdom, right? And therefore you'll carry a white stone, and nobody will know it but yourself. That's the way this works. But if you're looking to do credit to glorify yourself, then this kingdom isn't for you because you're not ready for it. And my father will have to do what he does. And I can't give you the exacts. Like I said, you're going to either disappear or you're going to go through hell. One or the other. It doesn't matter. But you'll go through hell before you disappear because it was written in Scripture that you have to pay your debt. And Jesus told you that those that he gave forgiveness and then did not give forgiveness to another would be cast into prison and pay all that's due. What is due, friend? Only you know. But you might not even know because you've been too busy looking at the speck in your neighbor's eye instead of the plank in your own. I suggest that this is the great time to get to know Christ, believe in forgiveness, and choose love over selfishness. All right? Because I love you, friend. I love you because my father loves you. That's it. There's, I, I'm nothing special. But because I'm nothing special, I don't have to be anything special. I can just be a father... His child, right? That's it. I'm just one of his children, just like you. My father has 8 billion of them on the planet at the moment, and he loves every last one of them. And so, because he loves me, he loves you, and because he loves you, he loves me. That's it. It's period. And if I refuse to love you, then he's going to have to refuse to love me, even though he wants to love me, so that I'll love you. <laughs> All right, friend. Just know that, like I said, I love you because my father loves you, and may God bless you and yours.